Hey everyone, Scott here, better known as Nerevo, and have you ever wondered how to create an airline livery with images or something really complex? Well, today I'm going to show you how I do that, and it's actually not that hard. So I'm going to create this AirAsia A330-300 in the UFC livery from scratch, and as you'll see, the entire process is a lot simpler than it may appear. So the trick is to use high resolution images. So I don't create any of the special livery myself. The actual Air Asia logo and the UFC logo and, and the octagon shapes, I create those, which you will see. But the images of the boxing gloves at the front of the fuselage are images. And uh, let's just jump right into it and I'll show you how I did it. So now I'm in Photoshop and this is a very high resolution photo that I got from Flickr. And I've put a link down in the description below to the exact photo uh, from the photographer um, that I'm using here. Just a shout out to the photographer who did this. It's a great photo. It's very sharp, very high res. And uh, basically, if you're looking for high resolution photos of airline liveries that you can take elements from, Flickr is the place to go. I don't recommend using Google Images or Airliners.net because a lot of times the images aren't high resolution enough. So going to Flickr, finding super high resolution images to extract the parts that you need from is, is how I do it. So what I'm doing here is I'm in Photoshop and I've extracted the portion that I need, which is the boxing gloves of this UFC livery. And I'm using the... Uh, what is that? The rubber stamp tool to basically remove the windows. And the really good thing about this specific livery is that it's so, I don't know, it's very random and it's not, it's not very precise. And you can see some of the, uh, the edges or most of the edges are really rough and they're, they're not clean. And that makes the process of knocking out the windows and painting over them so much easier, especially with the magic wand tool of Photoshop. It's so good. It uh, takes a little bit of practice if you've never used it before, but that's that's how I do this. You know, don't if you find a high resolution photo of a of an aircraft that features a special livery and you want to use elements of that livery in your own illustrations, don't worry about if there's there's windows or door frames in the image or as part of the photo because with Photoshop or basically any other graphics editing program, you can remove it very simply. This entire process of removing the door frame and the windows from these, um, or at least from this uh, boxing glove graphic took about, I don't know, I'd say 20 to 30 minutes. So it's not a, not a quick process. It's a lot of manual labor involved, but it gets the job done. So now I'm in Photoshop. I've got those images extracted and I've got a reference photo that I got from airliners.net just above my template here. Uh, by the way, if you want my templates of uh, you know, pretty much any commercial airliner that's in existence right now, go over to my website, norebo.com. You can get the free 1024 by 768 JPEGs. Um, you can download how many ever you want. You can, you can do whatever you want with those, and I highly recommend doing that. So anyway, that's what I'm using here. Uh, this is actually my high resolution version. It's a PSD file with all the layers on a on a separate um, <laughs> all the layers on a separate layer. That didn't quite sound exactly how I wanted to say it, but you know what I mean. So, yep, going back in now and just adjusting colors and the edges of that graphic that I cut out to match uh, as closely as possible the image above. And basically, it's a lot of manual labor, a lot of trial and error, doing different things, trying to get it so that it blends in with the fuselage. You kind of have to blur the edges a little bit of that image and it's kind of complicated. So now that I had that, I am in Adobe Illustrator now and I am creating the octagon shapes. I could have done this in Photoshop, but I'm just so much faster in Adobe Illustrator doing these vector graphics and just tracing crudely what I'm seeing here. My entire goal at this stage is to get things basically knocked out. I don't want to get too precise because these are vector shapes after all. And my, my goal is to go back and fine tune once I get 
them all laid out generally how they're supposed to go. And as you see, I'm just using red as a default color. Um, you know, getting too caught up in the details early on is only going to slow you down. So just basically knock things out as much as you can at first, and then go back in and adjust shapes and colors and textures, if any, later on. It's, it's so much easier. So you can see me doing just that, or exactly that right now. I've got my basic red octagons, and then I'm adding color to the ones that are um, the grayscale. And then this is where it gets a little bit complicated. There's a, a texture or lines that go through only some of these octagon shapes. So basically I'm just drawing slight arcs and I'm positioning them over top of the photo. I was gonna eyeball this on my own and not use any, any tracing or, or anything like that because photos and my templates, the perspective could be different between between the two and I just sometimes it's just better to create things on your own but in this case I traced exactly what I saw simply because it's kind of a complex series of shapes and I wanted to make sure I got it fairly accurate I mean it's not totally accurate but if you know me you know that my my illustrations aren't 100% accurate they're just good enough because I like to work fast. I like to create a lot. I don't like to spend a month on one illustration. I just, I would go crazy. <laughs> I can't do that kind of thing. So just working fast, kind of loose, and just trying to match what I see in the photo. And it's really hard to find perfectly side-on photos. And because like I said, I mean, different, uh, different kinds of lenses show different kinds of perspective. And my particular aircraft templates, what you're seeing here, is perfectly 100% side-on, and there's no perspective involved. So now I'm back in Photoshop. I've pasted my vector shapes into Photoshop, and now I'm going around and I'm, looks like I'm adding the red on the rear section of the fuselage, just tracing around some of those uh, vector shapes that I imported. And I love I love these colors. I really love the red and the and the grays and the blacks. It's a beautiful livery. It's a little bit chaotic for my tastes, but overall, it's it's really nice and um, you know it's not all that complicated. Adding some details here, like adding the white frames around the doors, which you can easily do with my PSD templates or my vector templates. And this Air Asia logo, I actually created this. This is a vector object. Um, I'm not going to show you how I did it in this particular video, simply because the point of this video is to show you how I created that special uh, graphic towards the front of the aircraft, those boxing gloves, which was just an image that I got from a Flickr photo. And um, I do have another AirAsia illustration demo coming up to this channel, and I'll show you how I created those AirAsia title graphics. So I did the same thing with the UFC livery, or the sorry, the UFC logo here, which is Really simple, I just found an image on Google and just traced over it in Adobe Illustrator so I could get a vector shape from that and I just copy and paste it back into Photoshop. Now I'm creating the official partner text which goes underneath that logo, which I couldn't find. Uh, this is just a, a unique element for this livery. And I found the font, which was Euro style of, which was kind of surprising, and I didn't really think that was it, but it's the closest font that I could find that matched that, and now I'm in Adobe Illustrator kind of bending it up a little bit so it matches the shape of the fuselage. Again, something that takes a little bit of practice, especially when you're dealing with typography. Bending typography is, is it's an art. Definitely, I, I'm not very good at it. And um, it's just something that you're just going to have to, to work with and do many, many, many times until you get it. So what you're seeing there is that other Air Asia livery that I created, stealing elements from. And uh, yeah, I got this ultimate fighting champion, sorry, ultimate fighting champion decal from that very high resolution photo that I got uh, for Flickr, so I'm just copying and pasting those elements into my illustration. So I've pretty much got it, and now I'm just adding the gloss like I do on all of my illustrations. Uh, if you've reached this point of the video, you know what I'm doing here. If you've seen all of my other videos, uh, it's just a simple hard reflection down the middle of the fuselage here. 
And uh, anyway, if you want access to my PSD vector high resolution templates for 50% off uh, at a great huge discount, <laughs> go to the link in the description below. You can sign up for the Norebo Discount Club and you'll get 50% off your entire first order of templates, of aircraft templates that I create. And whether you order one or you order 20, you'll get 50% off your entire order, your first one. So it's a great deal. And if you're, if you're getting serious about doing aircraft templates, it's, uh, it's something you should do. And that's pretty much it. As you saw, it's really easy to create special liveries like this. It's just a matter of uh, finding the right reference material for the exact project that you're working on. And it's hard. It takes a little bit of time, but if you have patience, you're going to find what you need. And as I said, Flickr is a really good place for that because people upload very high resolution images there. And uh, But again, if you use somebody else's images, be very careful. Uh, you cannot use these illustrations for commercial purposes. You cannot sell them. Uh, unless you get explicit permission from the photographer because you're using somebody else's work. So do be careful with that and you don't want to get yourself in trouble. Anyway, I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, do leave them down in the comment section below and I'll do my best to get back to them as soon as I can. So as always, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.